Good morning. It's um, uh, uh, early, and in fact, uh, we have competition. Uh, my colleague in electrical engineering, Eric Pop, is doing Thermoelectrics 101, a uh, short course uh, in parallel. Uh, this is, um, in fact, a, a, a research uh, project with Jens Norskoff in uh, chemical engineering and Piero Pianetta in uh, uh, SLAC and EE. The, the target, however, is not thermoelectrics with our low work functions, it's thermionics. So uh, uh, let's uh, uh, dive in and I'm gonna give you some motivation and background because in fact, uh, thermoelectrics are a well-known technology uh, advancing uh, through the efforts of uh, 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 GSEP funding, uh, making a major impact. Uh, what about uh, uh, thermionics? It's a century old technology. There is a, um, it's basically a diode. The anode or collector's work function is, is critical uh, in uh, the efficiency of this device, and that would be a target. Uh, there's also the uh, emitter or cathode, and that work function uh, is, is somewhat less critical, but some of this work could be dual use uh, for either uh, electrode. Uh, we've uh, spent a lot of time working on uh, alkali earths and, and computational modeling. Uh, also, some breakthroughs in uh, modeling the emission current from first principles, which is a, a first uh, in addition to the uh, work function. Sometimes you have a, a material with a superb work function, but an incredibly lousy uh, emission current density. So that, uh, uh, the ability to compute that is important. We're working on some alternative anode approaches, and I'd like to wrap up with uh, future pro prospects for uh, thermionic energy. So here uh, is an expanded view of this uh, uh, very simple idea of heating uh, uh, typically a metal, uh, though I'll uh, indicate some uh, uh, breakthroughs and alternatives to metals uh, for the uh, cathode, uh, and uh, simply collecting those emitted electrodes at a, at a material at a different temperature, cooler temperature, and different uh, work function. You have uh, something that uh, looks like uh, 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 a, a photovoltaic cell in that it gives low voltage and high current. Uh, if we do our energy band diagram, uh, we see that our output voltage ideally with no uh, losses would be the difference between the emitter and collector uh, work functions. Therefore, the collector or anode work function uh, needs to be minimized. Uh, the Richardson-Dushman law uh, uh, developed uh, in the previous century. Uh, that constant A is important as well on the, um, on the cathode. Um, there are uh, issues in radiative heat transfer I'll go into in a minute because of the large temperature difference. Um, there's also losses through the leads, through the interconnects that would uh, hurt your efficiency. So through the 20th century, there, were, uh, there was a tremendous uh, development in thermionic uh, converters. The basic concept, uh, Schlichter in his PhD thesis at Tübingen almost 100 years ago, uh, introduced in an appendix uh, the concept of a, the thermionic converter. Uh, Soviet uh, researchers in 1941, uh, in fact, uh, the first uh, work is in World War I and the second in World War II, uh, under interesting uh, conditions, no doubt, uh, but they uh, did a lab demonstration, uh, and after the war, tremendous uh, efforts in uh, the U.S. and uh, Soviet Union for uh, space power uh, using nuclear pile sources. But efficiencies were achieved uh, of uh, five to 10 percent. <clears throat> Ultimately, um, there was a conference in 1968 where the communities decided they were efficient enough at 20 percent uh, for their uh, uh, space applications. Um, just to show you that these uh, existed, uh, the, this is a Topaz II built uh, by the Soviet Union, flown uh, 27 years ago on a naval reconnaissance satellite, and uh, it's a six kilowatt uh, nuclear reactor uh, wrapped with a thermionic converter. Some materials issues being wrapped around a nuclear pile. Uh, and in fact, after the Cold War, we leased uh, a dozen of these and tested them. Uh, this is a photograph of uh, a U.S. plane with a Soviet uh, converter. So in any case, <clears throat> in the 21st century, we do have very high temperature sources of heat. This is a concentrated solar plant in Spain, and we have, uh, in fact, the Ivanpah CSP plant that's uh, come online in, <clears throat> in the Mojave Desert uh, 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 this year in March, and so uh, perhaps uh, this needs to be revisited. Um, 
<clears throat> after the Cold War, this is a capsulated perspective, uh, the um, uh, technology uh, uh, developed uh, was uh, tungsten with uh, adsorb cesium uh, to lower the work function. Uh, the electrode gaps were held at a, a hundred microns, a tenth of a millimeter over large uh, areas. I'm sure there were heroes of Soviet labor for the machinists on these uh, projects. This was um, uh, done in an era where cost was not an issue. Uh, observing U.S. ships on the dark side of the Earth was an issue for the Soviet Union and, and also for the U.S. Um, lots of work around. So uh, in any event, there was a, a, a study, uh, Thermionics Covatus, uh, uh, that looked at this uh, about uh, 13 years ago, and I'll reference that in a minute. Um, so I, um, uh, we, we've had a wonderful collaboration uh, under GSEP funding, and in fact, other uh, investigators that would be involved. Uh, this would uh, be a paper uh, with Nick Malosh and my former postdoc, uh, Eeyore Bargaton. Jay Lee is a uh, uh, grad student, uh, wrapped up his PhD last year, where we looked at the optimal electrode gaps. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, the 100 micron gap, you would have space charge issues that they battled. Uh, we can make gaps uh, using MEMS technology well below a micron. Uh, is that desirable? Turns out that you have these near-field heat transfer effects and you get thermal shorting, so there should be a, an optimum. And uh, Murphy must have been asleep because the, uh, the gap of 1 to 10 microns is something that is like falling off a log uh, for people making gyroscopes and accelerometers, which I spent a good part of my early career, <coughs> silicon gyroscopes and accelerometers using MEMS technology. So, um, uh, in fact, that's great. We can make it, possibly in technology that would drop the cost orders of magnitude uh, using uh, wafer scale fabrication. However, I referenced that Thermionics Covatus report. Uh, in that report, there was early, not late 90s work on a wafer bonded thermionic concept uh, at Sandia National Labs. The criticism of the uh, panel uh, was that. Uh, the heat, uh, thermal isolation would be a showstopper. You have differences in temperature of 500 Kelvin or more, gaps of a micron, you have tremendous gradients. How on earth can you possibly uh, have that kind of uh, uh, gradient? You'll have a th uh, thermal losses will we'll make this inefficient. Well, um, uh, in fact, um, uh, I've been on these panels. It's uh, interesting to make this kind of quote because you can always cover yourself by saying you were sort of provoking people. You know, you knew that this wasn't the case, but why not, uh, uh, you know, jab the uh, community? Uh, in fact, uh, thermal isolation micro platforms are, have been well known uh, since the 80s and 90s. Uh, bolometers are a very hot commercial topic for infrared uh, cameras for automobiles. They're made using these suspended platforms and the detection temperatures are millikelvin. Uh, you're thermally isolated from the substrate. And in fact, uh, uh, these uh, are fabricated using the kind of micromachining technologies that uh, would be uh, the subject of basic grad courses at, uh, at Stanford. Um, in fact, we've applied that technology to make a suspended structure uh, out of silicon carbide with no uh, uh, special, uh, 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 no tungsten, no work function coatings, just as an existence proof. And uh, in fact, uh, we, we uh, ran it as a converter using the sub, uh, silicon substrate as the anode. Um, uh, what would the converter look like on the Ivanpah Tower? Massive arrays of pixels, uh, uh, possibly individually addressable. Uh, EEs uh, like that idea. Uh, we can do some interesting things with access to that, at that level. So uh, actually optical heating of this, uh, we don't have any problem uh, going incandescent and keeping the substrate quite cool. Uh, and so thermal isolation uh, in a vacuum is a non-issue. Uh, in fact, a vacuum um, is also a non-issue. I think there, there may be some uh, interesting uh, practical challenges for long-term reliability, but in your pocket you have a, a gyroscope chip if you have an iPhone. Uh, that would be made using wafer bonded seals uh, using uh, uh, basically uh, a variant of MEMS technology. So uh, the, the um, ability to fabricate this is uh, not a problem in principle from my perspective. Uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the materials, uh, silicon carbide is not a candidate. It may be a structural material. If you look at the efficiency of uh, uh, the um, thermionic converter with a cathode temperature on the x-axis and efficiency, the 
Uh, these are ideal efficiencies without losses. This is the collector or anode work function. Going to very low work functions is important. Nanocrystalline diamond has been under one electron volt. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, we have, uh, 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 will report things that are on the order of one EV. And these efficiencies are, uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, in, in context, we may be a topping cycle on that Ivanpah plant. We may not have to replace the conventional heat engine. Our reject temperature could be quite high. So in any case, how do we find these materials? And now we get to this particular critically important GSEP uh, uh, grant um, uh, because, in fact, uh, people have made, uh, there's a whole industry with electron sources, SEMs, electron beam lithography, instruments of all kinds, and uh, these are often made with a tungsten uh, base metal, typically not crystalline, coated with a mixed oxide, uh, alkali earths, barium, strontium, calcium, uh, sort of mixed up in, uh, uh, in a mortar and pestle kind of fashion in some cases and, and uh, deposited in interesting ways uh, with uh, uh, migration uh, into, into the grain boundaries and ultimately uh, a very complex process leading to electron emission and low effective work function. So what um, uh, this project uh, proposed to do is look at this from a systematic point of view and uh, in fact, we have the um, uh, question of where to start. Uh, the most favorable, most stable configurations uh, have, in fact, uh, the x equals 4. And so we focused on those. Um, I will go into a lot of simulation in the next uh, slides. It's uh, just recently been in the literature with several uh, papers uh, uh, with my student Sharon Chow as the lead author. Uh, the, um, uh, uh, but, but in context, uh, uh, the fabrication technology where you would engineer the composition of these uh, would be, uh, uh, in, in, from my perspective, done using the atomic layer deposition, which is a very powerful tool. Uh, we are currently depositing strontium oxide on uh, tungsten, as a, as a, a, for example, but there's work in the literature where you would nano-laminate these materials between strontium and barium and, and calcium, and uh, uh, then uh, do post-processing to center and dial in that composition uh, uh, very, very uh, tightly. So focusing on, on, uh, on this set, we still have a lot of, uh, a lot of simulation to do uh, because we have uh, our, our basic uh, alkali earth is calcium, strontium, or barium, and we can dope that. In the literature, there's uh, a lot of work on uh, adding things, lithium and, and other uh, metals. So uh, what um, <clears throat> um, uh, is, is uh, showing here is a, is a virtual uh, atom uh, that uh, could be a blended uh, composition of the uh, pseudo-potentials of these uh, three atoms as a, as a shortcut. And, uh, <clears throat> Obviously, the unit cell that's being simulated is important to minimize that, uh, and it was uh, very important to have access to the SunCat uh, cluster up at uh, SLAC that Jens Norskopf would be in charge of. This is a very serious, big, uh, uh, big iron kind of uh, uh, computer. So uh, if we uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, what uh, we have this uh, uh, unit cell, uh, what we uh, would like to do is identify dopants that would um, uh, dopants and compositions that would uh, drive us in two directions. We want very large negative formation energies for stability. Uh, there are things like dispenser cathodes that spew out uh, some of these materials. We want a rock solid, uh, uh, stable material. Ideally, for those that are, are in the electron emission business, we would not want cesium in this. Uh, that's a difficult material to, to deal with, and, and can we do it with simply our mixed oxides? So we're uh, driving in a direction of low work function and uh, stable uh, formation energy. And if you look at the various dopants we can add, uh, they have effects that would uh, uh, often be useful. So we would be... Uh, focusing on ones like uh, scandium and lithium uh, that would um, uh, make this uh, 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 material uh, uh, more, more interesting as an emitter. So there, we're, we're faced with a large uh, triangle uh, uh, of uh, potential compositions. 
uh, and uh, how, does, how to deal with these simulations. Well, Sharon Chow, uh, my uh, uh, first student who has not gone into a bunny suit into the uh, uh, nanofab in my entire career, though an EE, uh, uh, looked um, uh, at uh, basically doing it brute force uh, with the actual atoms and uh, expanding the unit cell. And this um, leads to around a week uh, runtime. Uh, the virtual crystal approximation shrinks the cell, and uh, you get uh, down to hours. And in fact, uh, the differences uh, in, in some test cases are rather minimal. So there's an incentive to just uh, get started. And, uh, and of course, the, the blending of these pseudopotentials is very important in order to get uh, uh, the both computational feasibility and uh, benchmarking against experiment uh, uh, to get accuracy. So uh, Sharon's process would be, would be to get the atomic orbitals, generate smooth pseudopotentials from uh, uh, th uh, these uh, uh, orbitals, check the answer, reformulate, and repeat. Uh, fortunately, you can write scripts to do this, assuming SunCat isn't crashed by your activities. And uh, she did have her hand slapped for excessive uh, uh, consumption of uh, Slack's computing resources. Nevertheless, it was a, a, a very, very interesting result. Uh, what, what are we showing? Uh, we have uh, the pure mixed oxides with all compositions, uh, uh, with work functions and formation energies, adding scandium and lithium doping. And this is work functions and stabilities, 570 total comp combinations. So what this does is short circuit a massive amount of experimentation. And uh, uh, at the uh, Three Beams Conference, uh, which is where the electron beam people hang out, uh, this is uh, uh, of, ex of great interest. Uh, they have been mining the, this for a number of years using uh, 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 technologies that are not as controlled as ALD. And so uh, in fact, if you look at uh, uh, the pure films, it, it looks uh, uh, like you uh, can benefit um, going to, uh, uh, and so I'm, I'm mapping pure barium oxide and uh, a work function of around one and a half. And um, in fact, uh, if you look at um, uh, what calcium is doing, calcium, uh, the addition of calcium is in fact uh, 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 driving the work function higher. Um, However, it's making the formation energy lower, so it's a uh, kind of counter effect. And so you, you may be able to see adding a pinch of calcium uh, to get that surface stability while maintaining the low work function. Now, there is an experimental ratio here from a, a paper uh, about 13 uh, years ago. Uh, and so we would be um, uh, uh, benchmarking in the very limited experimental data. A lot of this is proprietary, actually, in the uh, uh, industry. So if we add lithium, we can uh, get uh, work functions of 1.2 eV and as stable uh, as the pure material. I'm going to click through this uh, quickly. The, um, uh, and, and so it looks like we have something that could be a potential candidate for a, ca a, a cathode material or an anode material. The um, uh, understanding of this, um, I'm going to uh, look at. Uh, 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 you can read the details in the paper. Uh, work function is, effect, is a function of the effective offset of the uh, uh, this, uh, uh, synthetic atom from the oxygen at the surface. And uh, in fact, that uh, could be uh, a physical insight in how you can control the work function. So uh, in any case, where are we? Okay, in, the, in this, uh, this was uh, shown earlier. Uh, if we indicate our lowest work function at 1.15, uh, we are getting uh, efficiencies that are in the range of 30% ideally. Uh, again, uh, we may not be rejecting the heat at 300 Kelvin. It may be a topping cycle. But uh, compared to their initial uh, work functions and without cesium, uh, I think this is a very important breakthrough. We would uh, uh, be gearing up uh, to do this experimentally. Um, uh, a, uh, a, along the way, uh, there were a lot of discussions on the inability to simulate the current density using density functional theory. Johannes Voss at uh, SLAC uh, 
and uh, Frank Abiel uh, Peterson uh, developed a way of extending the, um, uh, the uh, uh, supercell into the vacuum and, and, uh, and adding a decoupling region to the lead, to the interconnect, and essentially first principle simulating the current and benchmarking that against experiment. So now we have the whole uh, basic function of that uh, 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 high temperature material, work function and richardson dushman coefficient uh, for the first time on the, uh, 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 our ability is to simulate that to compute before we uh, do the fabrication. Uh, lastly, another paper with Johannes would uh, look at the uh, lanthanum hexaboride, which is a standard uh, uh, cathode material uh, with a, a layer of um, barium hexaboride. You're able to lower the work function by 400 millivolts uh, without any uh, uh, dipole barrier. So um, one challenge in, in uh, talking over uh, uh, with, you know, can we go synthesize this, uh, that um, uh, has proven to be challenging to, to do what would amount to be a, uh, an epitaxy of a monolayer uh, is, is it currently beyond our technology. But this would point in a, in a uh, new direction uh, for getting uh, materials that uh, are, are fundamentally higher performance, maybe lowering the working temperature substantially. Finally, we've, we've worked on other ways to lower work functions. Uh, this is, um, um, uh, uh, you know, as an electrical engineer, we think, well, we must be able to mess around with this using some gate or something to get what we want. Unfortunately, in a three-dimensional material, uh, we, 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 of course, can do what we've been doing, lowering the vacuum level using surface coatings. Maybe we can raise the Fermi level. Uh, it doesn't work in 3D materials, but it does work in 2D materials in, in uh, Philip Kim's group at Columbia, this was shown for transistors. So my uh, student Hong Yuan Yuan is uh, working on doing this for thermionics where we would have a, uh, a control through the substrate to do what we call electrostatic doping of the graphene, raising the Fermi level and lowering the work function. So we've been working on this with uh, uh, tremendous experimental uh, challenges to get uh, high quality graphene and over the, uh, um, uh, over the summer, Hong Yuan using a Kelvin probe has been able to show a very substantial uh, shift in uh, work function. And uh, at, at SLAC, uh, we're not getting quite the same shift, but still a much larger shift than, than has been shown in the literature. Uh, we have a larger uh, spot size and the uh, graphene isn't uh, uh, perfect. So uh, finally, uh, we are building up a, a, a test station for microthermionic converters. Uh, this is the SOLIDWORKS drawing. Uh, Hong Yuan's a physics uh, student, but uh, has come up to speed in vacuum technology. All told, in our multiple groups, we have five chambers for testing these. This is a new one. And, um, and so wrapping up, what are the prospects for wafer scale thermionic energy converters? I'll say wafer scale, these uh, uh, chip-based technology, MEMS technology, well, I think they're very simple devices uh, that uh, uh, have some very challenging materials uh, issues, high temperatures. Uh, there would be a large push in MEMS to go uh, embrace silicon carbide. Uh, my colleague Debbie Sineski in Aero and Astro would be working on high temperature sensors for uh, combustion and uh, 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 gas turbines. Uh, that technology very much overlaps with what we would need in thermionics. Um, uh, so I don't think the technology is an issue. I think the, the, the GSEP project has made a huge whack at the materials challenges and kicked off something very, I think, very exciting. Nick Malosh isn't here today because he's in Houston at a NASA conference on thermionic energy conversion. Uh, that would be uh, where I would be if I wasn't giving this talk as well, because I think what has been happening in, in GSEP and overlapping uh, pro projects is uh, uh, very exciting. So um, lastly, the photon enhanced thermionic energy converter, which was Nick and his student Jared's uh, Schwede's invention a few years ago, uh, would use a semiconducting photocathode. All of this work on the anode is valuable. Uh, 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 for the peat converter as well as the straight thermionic converter as we, as we call it. So uh, that is a uh, uh, exciting thing. So uh, I'd like to wrap up. Uh, GSEP has played a critical role uh, in, uh, in enabling this uh, uh, simulation project. Uh, Frank Abil-Peterson, a senior author, uh, the resources of <coughs> Yen's group in Sun 
had have been critical. Uh, and my group on the experimental side, uh, Sharon is now at First Fuel, uh, a uh, energy efficiency company. She finished her PhD. Uh, Igor is a professor. Jay, uh, a CEO of a startup. And uh, Nick and ZX's group uh, would be uh, 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 part. We have a large uh, uh, overall thermionics meeting and separate meetings. This has been a very exciting uh, research project. And GCEP has been absolutely critical to uh, kicking this off. Thank you. <clears throat> How big a role does radiation heat loss play between the emitter and the collector? It, um, <clears throat> it's certainly always there, but it, it is a tremendously strong function of the gap. Uh, there are, uh, uh, you know, there's sort of classical radiative heat loss, and then there are these near-field effects that have been modeled in, the, in recent years. And uh, we are uh, comfortable in this 1 to 10 micron range. Uh, but um, uh, going close, closer than a micron, and it actually uh, will short out your, your converter. You won't be able, you'll, you'll have such uh, radiative losses uh, that you uh, uh, don't have any efficiency. Uh, but it's, it's not a sh complete show sh showstopper by any, any means. <clears throat> If you treat it as a topping cycle, is it the same efficiency just with a smaller uh, amount of the energy, or do you actually increase the efficiency for like, basically that portion of the energy that you're going after? It would be an interesting complex optimization problem. And uh, uh, we went up, uh, Nick uh, and I, to uh, BrightSource, uh, the mm -hmm. Ivan Paw designers. And they would be very interested on when this is coming online. There's tremendous efforts on the primary heat engine if you have from left field something out of uh, almost the semiconductor industry that you could uh, put on, the, on that tower as a topping cycle, maybe it takes some pressure off them. But uh, uh, the numbers would be really encouraging if you give it a, even a 15% boost. Uh, that, that really matters. Um, uh, so it's a, uh, a work in uh, progress. I might mention that uh, Jared has won something uh, interesting from the Department of Energy, the M37 uh, program at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab for incubating uh, ideas that need more time uh, but have tremendous commercial progress, so he, uh, pro uh, promise rather. And he uh, uh, proposed uh, thermionic converters and, and won. And so he's looking forward to wrapping up his PhD and heading up there possibly with Dan Riley tagging along <laughs> who's in, in uh, Nick's group. So I think it's um, uh, something that I, I have uh, spent a lot of time talking on the overall picture because perhaps uh, uh, that might be not as familiar as other energy conversion. Uh, uh, with the centenary coming up next year, I think it's uh, high time that we uh, 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 really uh, apply some push in this as a complement to uh, uh, other uh, uh, energy conversion uh, technologies. So. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> so the block bin idea is really interesting. Mm -hmm. using the, can you hear me? <laughs> we, we have the, the chairs. Oh, you, uh, <laughs> can. So <clears throat> the uh, graphene idea is pretty interesting using the gating mm -hmm. to change the work function. Um, how much can you do at the end? Uh, because of gate coupling, uh, eventually uh, will have a limit. Yeah. Well, it, um, it would be with this, and <clears throat> I forgot to mention, that wasn't, it had no dipoles or anything. So the work function is way too high in, in graphene uh, to vacuum. We need to put something on it to drop the work function, then yank it around electrostatically. Um, <clears throat> we think we can uh, get under one EV. Uh, so, uh, the, and the voltages needed were not particularly high. Uh, and there's no current, of course, if, you know. And, and the anode is relatively cool, so you don't have to envision this operating at uh, outrageously high temperatures. Uh, Hong Yuan is uh, uh, very much interested in, in Pushing that. Okay. Let's thank the <coughs> logic again.